Hey there, it's Katya Andy. Welcome to a new English bit. I wanted to make this video for such a long time and finally it's here. Better late than never. Today I want to give you some useful pointers so that you can write an amazing essay when taking your CAE by Cambridge. The video is made up of seven parts. In the first part we're going to look at what the first writing task is like. In the second part of the video I'm gonna tell you how your writing tasks are assessed. In the third part I'm gonna give you some useful tips on how to write an amazing essay. In the fourth part we're going to look at some advanced grammar structures that you can use in both writing tasks. In the fifth part I'm gonna give you some super useful language, helpful phrases, to enhance your essay. In the second to last part, we're going to look at one sample essay written by my student Letitia. And to finish, in the last part, I want to give you some general tips in order to improve your writing skills. If you're interested in watching one specific part, you can find timestamps down below. Without further ado, let's get started. So let's begin. What is the first task like? It's the first and compulsory composition in your writing exam. You have to write an essay between 220 and 260 words and you've got 45 minutes to write your essay approximately. When writing something it's really important to consider your target reader. In this case it's an academic tutor. And this assignment may be written as a follow-up to a class activity such as attending a seminar or watching a documentary. The purpose is to present and support your argument while giving your reasons and examples. And you're also expected to be able to communicate complex ideas. So in the first part you're given a task and three bullet points. Three points to discuss. And there are also three opinions to illustrate each point. If you want, you can make use of them, but it's not compulsory. If you decide to use these opinions, you need to paraphrase and try to use your own words as far as possible. So there are three bullet points, but you need to pick two. You have to reject to rule out one point. So the usual and the most common structure of your essay is the following. There would be four paragraphs. In the first one you would introduce the topic and your two points. The second one would be focused on the first point. The third one would be focused on the second bullet point. And in the conclusion you would decide which point is the most important or the most effective one. In the sixth part of the video we're going to look at one sample essay so that you can get an idea of how it's written. Part 2. How is it assessed? Examiners will mark your writings using the following four scales. Number one, content. Here examiners will look at whether you've done everything you were asked to do, if content is relevant to the task and if the reader is fully informed and also if you've added your own ideas and examples. Number two, communicative achievement. Here they're going to look at your style, if it's appropriate, in this case it's going to be a formal style, if the writing is appropriate for the task, if uh, you can express complex ideas and if you can hold the reader's attention with ease. Number three, organization. So here it's about your structure. If it's clear and well organized, if your paragraphs are balanced of the same length more or less and if you can use a wide range of linkers. And number four, language, and it's about using a wide range of advanced grammar structures and vocabulary. 
you can get five points per scale. So in the essay, you can get 20 points. In the second part of the writing exam, you can get 20 more. So in total, you've got 40 points available. And in order to pass the writing exam, you have to get 24. So it means that in every scale, you need to get three out of five. And now let's move on to the third part. I'm gonna give you some tips on how to write an amazing essay. So first of all, you need to read the task very carefully and underline the keywords. My second piece of advice is to brainstorm ideas that you want to write about and think of your reasons and examples to back them up. Then plan your essay and shape its structure and content. You can use your draft paper for that. Then make a list of interesting and advanced vocabulary that has to do with this topic. Then make a list of some grammar structures that you want to include in your essay. Once your brainstorming and planning are done, it's time to write your essay in your answer sheet. Focus as much as you can. If you make a mistake, cross it out because Tipex is not allowed. Once you're done, don't forget to go over your essay and make sure there are no punctuation or spelling mistakes. And now let's move on to the fourth part. Both in the essay and in the second part of the writing exam, it's important to use a wide range of grammar structures. I made two videos focused on different grammar structures. Check them out and make a list of your favorite grammar structures. And today we're going to look at some grammar structures that you could make use of. So first, it's important not to use present simple all the time. So for example, we could use present perfect. Some examples, the first one, over the last 10 years, there has been a rise in the number of followed by a countable noun. For example, in the number of students, cases, or schools. The second example, obesity has become a major issue, problem, concern for many developed countries. And one more simple sentence here. Certain species have become endangered due to the destruction of their habitat by the development of tourist resorts. Number two, the use of modal verbs. It's great to include some modal verbs, such as could, would, might, or should. It's also great to start your sentence in a different way. One option is by starting with gerund. Two examples. The first one, reducing fees would therefore enable many more students to attend college. And one more sample sentence here. Setting up these kinds of programs would be expensive at first. Number four, how about using conditionals? It could be the first conditional, second, third, or mixed. The first example, if governments supported colleges in developing online courses, more people could study at a time and place that was convenient to them. And the second sample sentence, if governments continue to ignore the crisis, the long-term consequences may be worse than we can imagine. Five, it's also recommendable to include passive. For example, the students should be encouraged to ask questions. Number six, we could also use passive of the reporting verbs. For example, it is believed, thought, expected, that, whatever. We could also start our sentence in a more original way by using what. For example, what is normal for one set of people may appear rude to another group. Number eight, I highly recommend using inversion. For example, not only does it affect the quality of life of millions of people, but it has serious consequences for a country's economy and health services. Number nine, one of my favorites, the, the. For example, the more we travel, the more open-minded we become. Number 10, another way to start our sentence is with much as, which means 
although in Spanish it would be por mucho que. For example, much as it's enjoyable to spend time at home, we also need to meet with our friends. Number 11, you can also include one sentence with I wish or if only. For example, I wish we lived a more mindful lifestyle. Number 12, we could also use rhetorical questions. For example, have you ever considered stopping eating meat? And one more rhetorical question. Did you know that 70% of the population prefer shopping online rather than in physical shops? And last but not least, number 13, we could also use it's high time or it's about time followed by past simple. For example, it's high time we start to prioritize our well-being and mental health. So check out my two videos on grammar structures. You can find the links down below. Part 5. I'm gonna leave some useful vocabulary. I recommend pausing the video and writing down your favorite words, phrases that you think you could use in your essay. And you can also have one section in your notebook devoted to the CAE essay. And now let's move on to the sixth part. We're going to look at one sample essay written by my student Leticia when she was preparing the CAE exam. First, we're going to look at the task and it's the following. Your class has listened to a radio discussion on how more young people can be encouraged to study science. You have made the notes below. Ways of encouraging young people to study science. The first bullet point, advertising, the second, school programs, and the third one, government grants. And on the right, there are some opinions expressed in the discussion. For the first bullet point, we've got, you never see positive images of young scientists on TV, just pop stars or actors. For the second bullet point, we've got this example, Science lessons should be more practical and fun. And the third one, if young people see science as a career, they want to study it. And now we have to write an essay discussing two of the points in your notes. You should explain which way would be more effective in encouraging young people to study science, providing reasons to support your opinion. And now we're going to look at our sample essay first. The title, Encouraging Young People to Study Science. And now we're going to look at the introduction. Without a shadow of a doubt, there is a need to discuss the issue of motivating young people to study science. The two most obvious ways are advertising and school programs. Such areas offer two effective tools to promote science. Which one is the most successful? So in the introduction, we introduce the topic and the two bullet points. In this case, Leticia has chosen advertising and school programs. And we finish the paragraph by asking which one is the most successful. Because in the task, we have to discuss two and then we have to choose the most effective one. So in the second paragraph, we're going to discuss our first bullet point, which is advertising. To begin with, let us first consider advertising. Undoubtedly, advertisements play a crucial role in our daily routines. 
Therefore, if studying science is shown in the media, youngsters will be more interested in choosing a career in this field. Unfortunately, most famous people that appear in the media are singers, actors, football players, and so on. It would be an excellent idea to organize interviews with scientists or make more serious about science among others. And now in the third paragraph, we're going to focus on the second bullet point, which is school programs. With regard to school programs, if there were a wider variety of science courses, there is a distinct possibility that young people would find some of them appealing. Not only is education the key to success, but it's also the passport to the future. There is no doubt that education is the cornerstone of society. If school teachers can include more science in their classes, the rising generation will be more aware of a large number of degrees they can study at university and consequently all the appealing jobs they can land in the future. And the conclusion, all in all, taking the aforementioned points into account, I would argue that it's the school programs that are more effective, especially in terms of inspiring students. This opinion is in part based on the reasons listed above, but many more justifications could be cited. So in this essay, there are 270 words. If you write 10 more, it's not a problem, it's okay. I think it's a great essay in terms of content. Everything is covered and we've added our ideas and examples and I think the reader is fully informed. As for communicative achievement, the register is appropriate and we've expressed complex ideas. Organization, I think the structure is very clear and logical and we've also used different linkers. And in terms of vocabulary and grammar, I think we've used different advanced grammar structures like inversion, different conditionals. And I think we've got some interesting vocabulary here. So I really hope you found this sample essay useful and got an idea of what an essay is like. And now I just want to the last part of this video, part seven, which is an action plan. I'm going to give you some tips on how to improve your writing skills in general. First of all, check out the teacher's handbook. There you can find super useful information such as their assessment criteria, some sample essays with examiner's corrections super handy. Number two, when writing your sample essays, I recommend setting a timer and in this way you'll get used to writing your sample essay in 45 minutes and in this way you can avoid unnecessary stress on exam day. My third tip is to find someone who can correct your writings. If you can't find anyone, at least use AI to get some feedback. And my last piece of advice is to get used to reading a lot. I think it's one of the most profitable habits that you can build. The more, the better. And you can also start a vocabulary notebook where you can write down interesting words, phrases, or ideas. And remember that in order to become better at writing, you need to write. The more you write, the better you'll be at it. So guys, that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed and found today's English bit useful and it'll help you write a top-notch essay. If you liked today's content, please don't forget to like it so that more people can find this content and don't forget to subscribe as well. Thank you for your time. Thank you for watching and see you next Sunday as usual. Ciao for now.